let me look at some simple beams and let's draw the shear and moment diagrams for some simple beams. So here's the beam. Yeah, and down there I've got, that's where we're going to draw the shear and moment. So what I want to do, I want to know, okay, what, what's the V right here? What's the V here? V, I, I don't know, you know, what, what it's going to look like. Maybe it even kind of goes up. I want to know the V at every foot, let's say. Let, let, and the M at every foot. All right, so first, before I get started, I would look at the whole free body diagram and solve for the reactions A, Y, and B, Y. Uh, I would get that A, Y is 100 and B, Y is 150. You've got to be able to do that on your own pretty quickly and easily, right? By look, whole free body diagram, some of the forces in Y equals zero, some of the moments, maybe about A equals zero. So be sure you can solve, those, solve for those reactions. So now let me look uh, right here at this point. Where are we starting? What is the V right close to the beginning? So right now, and I've got to make room for this. One day I'll format my notes a little bit better, but let's cut it very, very close to the beginning. Basically right at the, let's cut it right at the beginning. Uh, we have that hundred right here. And so here's my question. What is the V and what is the M necessary right at the very beginning? So summing the forces in Y, 100 minus V, V equals 100. Summing the moments, uh, that is so close to the beginning. We're going to say we're at the beginning, right? 100 goes straight through it. V goes straight through it. So there's M is the only thing, and it equals zero. All right, so at the very beginning, We've got a V of 100 and an M of zero. V of 100 and an M of zero. So I cut it as close as humanly possible to right where that 100 pound reaction force starts. Okay, how about we go one foot? Let's go one foot over. And now what is the V, what is the M? Summing the forces in Y, 100 minus V. V is equal to 100. Summing the moments. But some of the moments about, I like some of the moments about the cut. V goes straight through it. Um, that 100 is now acting one away, creating a negative moment. That M is... So now the M is 100 uh, pound feet. V is still 100, so, so it, it goes like this. Uh, but the M is, goes from 0 to 100 like that. Actually, let me not connect it. Well, I'll connect it because that's what happens. All right, so that was if we cut it at one foot. Let's cut it at two feet. So that was one foot. Now we've got two feet. I've got 100. Nothing else. What is V? What is M? V is still 100. Now M would be 200. If I summing the moments, M would be 200. So this stays right here, but this keeps going up to 200. Now let's cut it at three feet. So now let's cut it right here, but hmm, not sure if I should cut it 
right before that 250 or right after that 250? Let's, let's do both. First, let's cut it before. So I'm, I'm a full three feet, but I haven't reached that 250. So the only thing I have is 100. What is V? What is M? By summing the forces, V is 100, M is 300. So right here, right before, it's still 100. And then up here, it is 300. All right, but, but what would change if still at three feet, but now I do have, I do feel this 250 and this 100 right here. All right, this would be V, this would be M. Summing the forces, NY, 100 minus 250 minus V equals zero. Now I've got V needs to be negative 150. So what happens is it, it kind of immediately drops all the way, negative 150. How about summing the moments? Let's sum the moments about the cut. That 100 is acting three away, creating a negative moment. I've got M. That 250, though, is, is pretty much right, no distance away. So M is still 300. So the, the moment doesn't uh, go anywhere due to that 250 force. Uh, but that shear diagram drops down by 250. All right, let's keep on going. Now let's cut it at four feet. I've got 100. Now I've, I've got that 250 right there, three feet you know, away. What is V? What is M? Summing the forces in Y. 100 minus 250 minus V. V is still 150. Uh, summing the moments. Did the moment change? Some moments about the cut. 100 is four away, creating a negative. But 250 is one away, creating a positive. So what does that make M? M would be 150. So now M is right there at 150. And lastly, let's cut it right before the end. Let's cut it right before the end. I've got 100, I've got 250, right before it gets to the end. So, so we've got the full five feet worth of uh, beam. What is the V, what is the M? Summing the forces in Y, 100 minus 250 minus V. V is still negative 150. And summing the moments, 100 is five away, creating a negative moment. 250 is two away. That means my M would actually need to be zero. So the M would be zero. All right, and I like to, the book may not do, some other books may not do this. I like to bring this back up to zero because it's almost like after, after I account for this 150, um, it's almost like you're stepping off the beam. You should be back at zero. So I like to start my diagrams from zero and make my diagrams end at zero. Okay, but anyway, there, so now, now I have the shear and moment diagram for this beam. It, it is 100 from there to there. It drops straight down to 150. It goes over, it goes like that. So what is the maximum shear? Well, the magnitude, maximum magnitude would be 150. Where does it occur? Everywhere in this section, it, it has a shear force of 150. What's the maximum moment? Well, look at the diagram. Maximum moment is 300. Where does it occur? Right where that 250 uh, force is being applied. And in, in case someone, I, I needed to know, hey, what's the moment over here? I could look at my diagram and I could, I could see. Okay, what's the moment at two feet? It'd be right here. Okay, we're not gonna want to cut 
and calculate at every single location, are we? Do you think that we could have looked at that diagram and just drawn the shear and moment diagrams out like this? I can, all right, in, in a day, y'all will be able to, okay? So that we don't have to do this, right? There are some really cool things. You probably can see them right now uh, that will let us just draw these without calculating every single point, right? Okay, so let's go pretty quickly through the next few pages. All right, and see if we can figure some things out. All right. So if I were to do these statics right here, I would get 100 and 100. And being the smart guy that I am, I would know that this goes up here, and it goes like that. That's what this one's shear diagram would look like. This one's moment diagram would look uh like like that okay so so this would be linear here to here i try to draw a straight line that would be linear right there to there of 100 to negative 100 and then that moment would be kind of like an x squared it, it's not it won't be linear it will be an x squared due to that uniform load. Well, we'll come back to this and talk about why. Actually, actually, let's, 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 let's cut this here. Let's cut this here at some unknown X. Let's cut this at some unknown X. I probably should have done this first here, sorry. Kind of giving away the answer here. So let's say we've got a distributed load at some location x, we have 100 newtons right here. Uh, and I want to know the v and the m. Well, if I sum the forces in the y direction, I've got 100 going up. What do I have going down? Well, I've got 20 newtons per meter, 20 newtons per meter. And how many meters worth do I have? Uh, let me call this x. So it'd be 100 minus 20x minus v. So v, I, I could write an equation for this one, 100 minus 20x. That's what that line was. It was 100 minus 20x. How about summing the moments about the cut? How about summing the moments about the cut? 100 is acting a distance x away, creating a negative moment about the cut. This distributed load, I would replace it at the middle. So the distributed load, I would replace it with 20x acting at x by two. Does that, do you follow that? I would replace that distributed load. The magnitude would be 20x, and I would place it at the middle, and so the moment arm would be x by 2. That would be positive. Plus m equals 0. m, if we wanted to write an equation for m, it would be 100x minus 10x squared. And it, it would look like that that I just drew. It would look like that that I just drew. Okay, let me real quickly show you the shapes of some of the next ones. Is this interesting right here? We'll come back to that. Uh, let me show you the shapes of this next one. This one would look more like, uh, let's see, make sure I'm looking at the right one. This one would be like this sort of shape right here. And the moment diagram would, would be kind of interesting. It, it would reach... So maximum here and come, well, sorry, sorry, sorry. It needs to get down to a minimum. Uh, 
All right, just don't, don't worry too much about that. Let's look at the next one real quickly. This one might go up, nothing, and then straight back down. And then the moment, there is a moment at the wall. It's going to go like this, immediately go up and go like that. Okay, do y'all notice any things about these from the load to the shear to the moment? Look at the load, look at the shear, look at the moment. You've got four minutes to make it click. Let's go back. Look at the load. See that linear load? This is like a x squared load. This is even more, moments even more complicated. What about this one? This one is uniform, then it's linear. Then it's like an X squared. These are my thoughts. These are my thoughts when we're going from loading to shear to moment. It looks like it gets more complicated, right? It looks like it gets more complicated as we go from the loading to the shear to the moment. Um, it's almost like, do you notice this one? This one is uniform. Then it goes to linear. Then it goes to like an X Exponential. Does anybody notice anything about these two equations? These two equations. Integral, yes. Yes, yes. So if we're going from loading to shear to moment, it's almost like we're integrating. If we go backwards, it would be the derivative. The, if you've got the moment, the shear is the derivative of the moment. So let's say, uh, and I'll put in quotation marks, we're integrating as we're going from loading to shear to moment. We are differentiating as we're going from moment to shear to the loading all right but so next class we're going to talk about we're going to talk about hey okay that 100 what does that do to the um shear diagram it bumps it up 100 hey this distributed load what does that distributed load do it pushes it down it pushes my shear diagram down what does this 100 do it pushes it back up all right so we'll talk about how we can draw these diagrams without doing all of this math so much. Okay?